One of Australia's biggest companies has been engulfed in scandal over accusations of bribery and corruption in its operations overseas. Construction firm Leighton Holdings has been accused of paying kickbacks to Iraqi officials in return for receiving lucrative contracts from the Iraqi regime. The accusations in today's Fairfax newspapers are the latest in a string of corruption claims that have dogged the firm for the past two years. Leighton's longtime CEO, Wal King, has emphatically denied any wrongdoing. Tonight, new evidence is emerging in the form of testimony from a company insider who told police there were many aspects of Leighton's international business that were corrupt. Adam Harvey reports. Earlier this year, at the Sydney headquarters of the Australian Federal Police, a former senior executive of one of Australia's biggest construction companies sat down with two AFP agents to drop a bombshell. The executive had left the international division of the construction firm Leighton Holdings, and he believed it was time to lift the lid on the company's operations offshore. Can you explain how the corporate governance policies of Leighton's Holdings Limited were implemented at Leighton's Offshore? Well, I would say that one of our major concerns here is that there was very little corporate governance at Leighton International, full stop. The police were already investigating allegations of corruption, bribery and fraud. These had been raised over the previous two years about the company's operations in the Middle East and Asia. The executive's inside account would confirm some of what the police already knew. Of all operating companies I was familiar with, I would say International had almost no corporate governance at all. There was just a litany of disasters. The allegations made by the executive in his interview extended well beyond a systemic lack of corporate governance. There was no proper organisational structure over the top of it. The way Leighton International had been managed was an absolute disaster. Pretty much everything that Leighton International touched was a disaster. Either commercially, we felt that there were many aspects of Leighton International which were, were corrupt. Leighton is one of Australia's biggest companies, earning $19 billion last year. It builds huge projects like tunnels, hospitals, power stations and dams. It operates in countries including India, Indonesia and Malaysia, as well as Australia. The Hins Dam Stage 3 project will provide a total storage capacity of 309,700 megalitres. Lately, it's made headlines for the wrong reasons. Today, um, we announced a potential breach of our code of ethics. In a statement, Leighton Holdings said it's reported the breach to the Australian Federal Police. Today, Leighton is back in the news. At the centre of the story reported by Fairfax Media is a $42 million kickback allegedly paid by a Leighton firm to an intermediary in Monaco. It was to be passed on to Iraqi officials who had selected Leighton for a $750 million pipeline contract. The documents make it really clear that senior company officials at Leighton's were told, were informed, that to win the massive Iraq contract worth $750 million, Leighton's had to pay a kickback or an inflated contract to a firm who had been nominated, selected by the very Iraqi officials which gave the company uh, the, the massive contract. Internal company documents reveal the payment to Iraqi officials first came to light within Leighton in November 2010. A file note written by acting CEO David Stewart refers to negotiating a $500 million extension to a contract in Iraq and says this would require a payment to a third party NSC or nominated subcontractor of $50 to $60 million. Stewart wrote that he had asked whether Leighton boss Wal King had approved the payment, and he was told yes, he had. Stewart noted the payment was exactly what had got AWB, the Australian Wheat Board, into trouble in Iraq. Everybody knows AWB was found to have paid tens of millions of dollars in bribes in Iraq to the regime of Saddam Hussein to win contracts. So the reference makes clear that in Leighton's, it was clear 
or at least very much suspected at the highest levels of the company that bribery and corruption was being played out here. We had our Royal Commission um, into the Australian Wheat Board in 2005 here in Australia and you would think that after that uh, companies would have been aware of the dangers both to their reputation and uh, more, more specifically for liability for their officers if they engaged in corrupt practices like this. Twelve months after the alleged kickback was discussed within the company, Leighton reported the matter to the Federal Police, which then began investigating. Today, the company released a statement saying it takes the accusations seriously and is deeply concerned by suggestions of impropriety. In 2011, Leighton Holdings voluntarily reported to the AFP a possible breach of its code of ethics that, if substantiated, may contravene Australian laws in relation to work in Iraq. Following the discovery, Leighton conducted an internal review of the projects involved. This identified instances of failures to meet governance standards in the proper documentation of contractual arrangements. Leighton says it dismissed a senior executive involved in the breach in 2012, has substantially changed management structure and has continued to cooperate with police. It says the company's directors acted with care and diligence at all times. Leighton's former chief, Wal King, declined an interview with 7.30, but spoke to the ABC's Peter Ryan. Well, Wal King, what's your reaction to the allegations in Fairfax media newspapers today? <clears throat> well, I deny the allegations that I had any prior knowledge of uh, circumstances in Iraq. I've never visited Iraq. But you, you would have been aware of the AFP investigation that was taking place, that, that's been underway since um, Leighton self-reported uh, back in February last year? Uh, only by press reports. The AFP have not spoken to me and I am bound by confidentiality agreements with Leighton, so I really can't say any more. We're certainly greatly interested in, in the revelations. These revelations are bad timing for Leighton. It's in the middle of a class action lawsuit brought by shareholders after the failure of several major projects. The firm has been investigating um, Leighton since 2011 and we, 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 we're not um, wholly surprised by the allegations, but there are new matters that have been raised today. For Leighton's highly paid board of directors, ignorance will be a poor defence. What I do know is under um, corporate liability, under the director's duties provisions, um, directors and boards have to ask questions. Uh, it's often not what they know, but what they should have known and what they should have asked about. Uh, their responsibility is to monitor management and to ask that tough questions, particularly in high-risk contexts like this. The corporate regulator, ASIC, says it has not investigated these allegations because it's not responsible for the oversight of foreign projects. I think ASIC hasn't acted um, well. In fact, it really hasn't acted at all. And I don't think there's any place for regulatory territorial wars or um, uh, um, division between regulators. I think they should be working with the AFP. Nearly a decade after a Royal Commission exposed rampant corruption by Australians operating overseas, it appears that tighter regulation may be the only way to force companies to behave. Well, I think this case suggests that really the AWB inquiry didn't have the impact that uh, many of us hoped it had. I don't think it's just about companies. I think the government and the regulators do have a responsibility to be sending a message to the market about this.